In lecture three, we're going to look at types of data. Returning to our indicative scientific method steps, in the previous lecture, we looked at how you collect data via various sampling techniques. Now that we have the data, we want to look at its properties, and that will allow us then to continue to do the exploration and finish off with the hypothesis testing. So why do we need to consider the type of the data? Well, the type of data is ultimately going to decide which type of analysis that you can use. Let's consider two simple examples. Firstly, in relation to graphics. Below, I have two images. On the left, I have a bar chart for car color. And on the right, I have a histogram for room temperature. Now, the bar chart on the left, that's used to represent qualitative data. Qualitative data is data that has a name. So in that example, we have car color, black, blue, green, and so on. Frequency is on the, on the vertical axis. So for example, we have 12 black cars in this particular sample. Now on the right hand side, we have a histogram for room temperature. Histograms are used to represent quantitative data. Quantitative data, as the name implies, is numerical data. So room temperature is a number. So on, say for example, in the histogram on the right, in the range 22 to 23, we have just over 40 rooms that have a temperature in that range. Now, secondly, the type of data is going, to, is going to be important in relation to the type of numerical measures that you can use. For example, if you consider the mean, which is the sum of the data points divided by the number of them, we cannot use that with qualitative data. You can't get the mean of black, blue, green, but you can get the mean of temperature, a set of temperature points. So types of data is going to determine which type of analysis that you can use. Let us look at some more examples of qualitative and quantitative data. Qualitative or categorical data refers to non-numeric data, which can be used to describe qualities, characteristics, or attributes. The graph, the image below shows some examples, a person's name, a smell, which is an attribute or characteristic, and the color of something. Quantitative data is a numerical uh, data point. Some more examples are there in the image below. Scores on an exam, weight of a person, and shoe size. Now, quantitative data can be subdivided further into discrete or continuous. Let us consider discrete quantitative data first. Discrete data is any data that can be counted. For example, in example one below, We've got the number of pages in a book. That is something that, while it's monotonous, you can do it. You can count up the number of pages. Shoe size is something that can be counted as well. Another property of discrete data or discrete variables is that they can only take on a finite or countable number of values in a range. Let me show you how that works by looking at a simple number line. Let's say we have a children's book that's got five pages in it, very small book. So if we have our number line, one, two, three, four, five, let's say we have a set of books, children's books that can take on any value in that range. The first book we pick up might have say one page, the second book might have four and so on. But any book we pick up can only take on one of those five values. So it's a countable number of values, one, two, three, four, five, and there's a finite amount. It's not infinite, okay? Another property associated with quantitative data is that there are gaps between the numbers. So for example, we're not going to pick up a book and find one and a half pages. We're not going to pick up a book that has say 3.23 and so on. Now with the example I've drawn here, we have whole numbers, but if we move over to example two, where we have shoe sizes, and let me just put in the four numbers that are indicated there on a number line, not drawing this to scale. So we've got five, 5.5 and six and 6.5. And let's say we're dealing with a set of shoes 
sets of shoes that can only take on one of four values. So it's got all the same properties as I described on the left hand side. Just the difference here is that we have numbers with decimal points, so non whole numbers, but it still is a discrete data or discrete variable. Next, let us look at continuous quantitative data and compare it to the discrete case. So with discrete data, we said that it could be counted. With continuous data, it's something that's measured. For example, temperature in a room. room. You're not going to count that. You're going to measure it. A person's height, you're going to measure that also. Okay. Now, the, other, the, big, the real big difference between continuous and discrete variables or data is that a continuous variable can take on any of an infinite number of values in a given interval. Let's consider example one down here to illustrate that. Let's say we're dealing with lengths of film that go between one and five meters. Okay, so I'll draw my number range one to five. And say for these sets of films, we pick them one, one, at, one at random, we measure the length, and it's going to lie some, somewhere in that range. So it looks similar to what we had with the discrete case. Okay, let's say we pick out the first set of film. It's got a length of one meter. So there's our data point. The next one has four meters. But let's say the next one we pick out is got a length of 2.5. Next one we pick out might have a value of 1.9 and so on. So that's where the infinite number of values comes in. Our sets of film can take on any value between one and five. There's an infinite number of possible numbers. Another big difference compared with the discrete is there are no gaps between numbers because any number can be taken on. Next, let's look at levels of measurement, which is used to categorize or measure data. So this image below shows the different types of level of measurement that you can encounter. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So at the bottom, we have nominal and ordinal, and I'll go into more detail on those in a minute, but both of those are for qualitative data. Interval and ratio, they're for quantitative. And if you start at the bottom, nominal is just names, okay? Per person's name. Uh, location. Ordinal is also a name, but there's an order to those names. And I'll give you some examples in a moment. Then moving on to interval, we can talk about differences between numbers. And the big thing difference between interval and ratio is the definition of zero, which we'll discuss in a moment with some examples. So like with the types of data, knowing the level of measurement that is appropriate, that will determine how your analysis plays out. So it allows you to interpret the data. And as I mentioned, which type of statistical analysis can be used. So as mentioned, qualitative data can be measured with nominal or ordinal level of measurements. In the case of nominal, that just has, it's just names, labels, or categories. There's no order there. So car color, blue, red, green, there's no order to that. Person's name, same idea. There's no order to person's names. Whereas with an ordinal, there is an order in there. For example, down here in this image, we have different categories used to categorize um, peppers and how spicy they are. So the names, you pick a pepper, you measure its spiciness or how hot it is, you go from hot, hotter to hottest. So they again are names, which is what we have with a cat or quality of data, but there is an order to those. Another example is exam grade, A, B, C, D. There's an, they are names again, but there's an order to them. So they are they, an order, a ordinal level of measurement would be used with them. Quantity of data data then can be measured with an interval or ratio scale of measurement. So firstly, interval, 
the order and difference between two values is meaningful. So if we have two numbers, we can talk about the difference between them and there's an order to them. And there is no meaningful zero point. And this is important because this is the big difference between interval and ratio. Ratio has all the same properties as interval, but there is a meaningful zero point. And in, the, in that case, it refers to, it means that there's none of that quantity present. For example, think of mass of a person, okay? You would use a ratio level of measurement there because there is a meaningful zero, okay? A person's weight, if it's zero, that means they, well, they don't exist, okay? So if we go back up to interval, let's think of some examples where there isn't a meaningful zero. Well, temperature in degrees Celsius, you can talk about the order and difference between two values, but there is not a meaningful zero. Now there is a zero degree Celsius, of course, but when you're at zero degrees Celsius, it represents something and you can go below it, minus one, minus two, and so on. Same with year, okay? So we're in 2024 AD as, we, as I'm recording this, we can go back to zero and then we go into BC. So there isn't a meaningful zero there either. So this, this uh, concludes this uh, lecture on data types. In the next lecture, we're going to look at, start looking at the types of analysis you can do. And initially we'll focus on one variable.